Breaking news from WRAL. Coverage you can count on. At least one person has serious injuries after being stabbed at this very popular area in Glenwood South. Coming up, I'll show you the crime scene. And it's going to be another hot day. We climb back into the triple digits with our heat index. I'll show you when we could go under a heat advisory. Kamala Harris will soon introduce her running mates, and they're coming to Raleigh. What we know about the event next week that's part of a seven-state cross-country schedule. And after the U.S. women's gymnastics team got their gold in the redemption tour, the men will try to do the same today in the all-around final individual events. Plus, swimmers were in the Seine this morning competing in the triathlon. For the first time in this Olympics, they were able to be in the water as those issues of the water quality uh, kind of plagued the Olympics there. Good morning, everyone. It is 6 o'clock. We have a beautiful sunrise for you and a lot to tell you about on this Wednesday morning. We made it to the midweek. I'm Renee Chu. And I'm Jeff Hogan. And how fun have the first few days of the Olympics been? I mean, just great. The payoff gold medals and whatnot. And now they're in the water in the sense so that is great mm -hmm. deal going. It's clean enough. Elizabeth Gardner over in the WRS Severe Weather Center. We're going to find some water today with the heat rising. Oh, yeah, we're going to be back at it at least for the next couple of days um, through the early part of the weekend. It's going to be very hot again. We take a live look at the airport here. RDU, you can see this pretty glow, though, as that sun's just starting to pop up. And we are seeing mostly clear skies right now. 74 degrees as you're headed out the door in the triangle with a dew point of 68, which is still up there. We also have a small chance for showers and thunderstorms this afternoon, uh, about a 20% chance around the triangle, but a slightly better chance in some of our southern counties. We'll go over that with future casts coming up. A high of 95 in the middle of the afternoon. It'll feel more like 103 to 104 across parts of the viewing area. We also are watching the tropics. A 60% chance that this system down here in the Bahamas could develop and possibly move off the coast of North Carolina. Not necessarily making landfall, but it's really too early to tell. Um, uh, most likely we would see rip current danger and potentially some coastal erosion. The American model drifts it back here into the Gulf of Mexico. So a lot of things to watch over the next several days. This is not likely to happen until early next week. So we'll go over these scenarios in more detail coming up. Ken. Well, it's been at 601 weather and traffic every 10 minutes for the next hour. We're going to make sure that you know exactly what to expect when you get ready to head out this morning. Uh, let's take a look at our live sensors this morning uh, in the capital city. Uh, nothing but green showing up on our live sensors, which means traffic is delayed free in both directions and the belt line, I-540 as well. Let's take you outside and give you a live look at I-40 and Rock Quarry Road. Traffic is beginning to pick up just a bit, but moving nicely in both directions. Breaking news. Police say a person is now in custody after a stabbing on Glenwood South. It happened after 2 a.m. and Nick Perlin was there in the WRL breaking news tracker. Raleigh police officers had this area of Glenwood South taped off early this morning as they investigated a stabbing that left at least one person with serious injuries. Now, I want to get you to this video from the WRL breaking news tracker just so you can see what this looked like. You can see crime scene tape blocking off this area of Glenwood South, as well as evidence markers here as Raleigh police tried to gather more information. We did learn from Raleigh police that two people were stabbed. One man has serious injuries, but we're still trying to get an update on how the other person is doing it. At this time. Now, when I did first arrive here, about three people told me there was some sort of fight early this morning. We're still trying to learn if that fight led to the stabbing. We know Raleigh police also arrested one person this morning. We're still trying to find out the identity of that person. We'll keep you up to date with any new information we learn. In Raleigh, Nick Perlin, WRL News. Kamala Harris will be in Raleigh next week with her new running mate by her side. The Harris campaign says she will announce the running mate in the coming days and they will crisscross the country together. Their first stop together will be in Philadelphia on Tuesday. They also will visit Wisconsin, Detroit, Savannah, Phoenix and Las Vegas next week, along with Raleigh. No further information has been provided about exactly where or when that Raleigh stop will be. Former President Donald Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, is calling Harris dangerously liberal and says she unleashed the worst border crisis in American history. He held a campaign event last night in Reno, Nevada. In his speech, he called Harris a disloyal American and said opening the border to millions of migrants is threatening to bankrupt Medicare. Today, state school leaders will consider name, image, and likeness rules for high school sports. They'll talk about it today ahead of a vote coming in September. WRO's Kelsey Coffey is at the State Education Building this morning. Kelsey, those board members will look at years of research about NIL in high schools. 
Jeff, they'll be able to get an update on two years of research on this. So now leaders here at the state education building will be able to make an informed decision about how to move forward. Right now, North Carolina student athletes are not allowed to profit off their name, image and likeness. Our state is in the minority when it comes to these guidelines. More than 30 other states already have NIL policies. The average NIL deal for a high school athlete is between 60 and $120. This from the State High School Athletic Association. State education leaders will make a final decision about NIL in September. This morning, they're only going to hear about the research. We'll keep you updated on what comes out of a presentation that's scheduled for 1045 this morning. Now, coming up in the next half hour, we'll hear more about what state education leaders are addressing later today that could impact your student's safety. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. A huge story out of the Middle East this morning. Hamas says its leader was assassinated at his home in Iran. Hamas says he died early this morning in an Israeli strike on the home. Iran's supreme leader says he is vowing revenge against Israel. Russia and China also condemn the attack. Israeli officials have yet to comment. Hamas says Ishmael Hanaya was killed after he attended the inauguration ceremony for Iran's new president. The chief of Israel's intelligence agency vowed to kill Hanaya after Hamas's October 7th terrorist attacks. Three of his sons were killed in an airstrike on the Gaza Strip in April. Hezbollah says it is still searching for the body of a commander targeted in an Israeli strike in Lebanon. The Israel Defense Forces says the strike near Beirut killed the organization's most senior military commander. The attacks mark the most significant Israeli escalation since tensions between Israel and Hezbollah flared after October 7th. New this morning, authorities in Lenore County arrested a man accused of abusing dogs. He was arrested around 1230 this morning, and the sheriff's office plans to hold a news conference about it at 2 p.m. Matthew Neal is the owner of East Carolina Retrievers. He faces nine counts of felony cruelty to animals in Lenore County, two misdemeanor counts in Duplin County. Authorities seized 11 dogs from his property and say they are in a safe location now this morning. Good morning, Chris Lovingood here in the WRL Live Center. I have my eye on what's unfolding in Paris for the Olympics right now. Very exciting. After days of water quality concern issues, the triathlon has finally been underway. Actually, the women have already finished. It looks like France came in first and the United States only came in 10th. But I say only in. That's still pretty good, right? But over here, this is what the triathlon is looking like for the men. It's still going on and they are currently in the run portion of it. Looks like New Zealand is currently in first right now, but I'm not seeing any American flag on there for at least 16 spaces. So again, what's significant is there is all that rain that caused the uh, Sin River to have some water quality concerns. But finally, after days of that, it's underway. Thanks, Chris. We'll be watching for more history to be made today in Paris after a huge day yesterday for Team USA. At 9 this morning, the USA women's beach volleyball team will play France. Starting at 1130, you can watch Team USA men's gymnastics compete in the all-around final. Then starting at 2.30 this afternoon, it is all things swimming. There are two women's finals, one for the 100-meter freestyle and the other for the 1,500-meter freestyle. You can watch all those events and more live today right here on WREL or catch the replay on Primetime in Paris starting at 8 tonight. And coming up at 6.15, NBC's Jay Gray joins us live from Paris with a breakdown of the big wins for the USA. Today we will hear from Governor Roy Cooper about the efforts to expand access to women's contraceptives across our state. Beginning tomorrow, women who receive Medicaid will be able to get O-Pill for free. It's the country's first over-the-counter birth control. Today's news conference starts at 11 a.m. The search for a man accused of nearly hitting a deputy with a car while escaping arrest now spans two counties. Why authorities say the conditions are making the search effort challenging. Former President Trump is attending a convention for black journalists today. The rift his appearance is causing among the organization's leadership. And the heat is back. We climb into the upper 90s for the next several days. We could end up with a heat advisory as well. I'll show you when we could see the temperatures feeling like over 100. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM in Durham 96. FM and everywhere on 101.5 HD3.
611, pretty start across our area this morning. This is a live look at Apex this morning. We're looking at mostly sunny skies as that sun started to come up across the area. Our temperatures, of course, are warm. The warmest here on this graphic, 77 in Goldsboro, 75 in Rocky Mount, 75 in Tarboro, 73 degrees in Southern Pines. It's a quiet start this morning, but there's the potential for an isolated thunderstorm this afternoon, especially south of the Triangle. We should stay pretty dry at the Bulls game. They played Memphis tonight, 635, and they threw out the first pitch. It'll be 90. Um, but dropping into the mid 80s by the time the game is over. Walking the dog this morning, of course, it feels you know more comfortable. But this afternoon, 95, it'll feel more like triple digits with the heat index. And the next couple of days, we could be into the danger zone. I'll show you coming up, Ken. All right, Elizabeth, uh, happening now in the W Traffic Center. No major incidents to report that's going to delay you, especially if you're getting ready to head out this morning. Uh, looking at the major roads into the capital city this morning, virtually very little to no delays to report. Uh, just about one minute coming in from Wake Forest on Capitol Boulevard. Similarly, in the Bull City, absolutely no delays in any of the major roads heading into the Bull City, something that you want to know, especially if you're getting ready to head out. And of course, Jeff, we'll have another update in about 10 minutes. Yeah, I can right now. Manhunt continues across two counties for a man who nearly hit a deputy with his car while he was trying to escape arrest. Deputies in Harnett County are using drones and canines to try to find Eric Stone. Lee County Sheriff's Office says he nearly ran over a deputy Monday. He later crashed his car and then got out and took off on foot. Stone is wanted in Harnett County for being a habitual felon and for possession of methamphetamines. He's also wanted in Lee County for a probation violation. He now faces an additional charge of assault with a deadly weapon on a law enforcement officer. Authorities say the swampy landscape in that area is giving Stone a lot of potential places to hide. Today, the Federal Reserve will meet to decide whether to cut interest rates for the first time since 2020. Analysts say it's unlikely the Fed will make the decision to reduce rates right now. Chair Jerome Powell has signaled he wants more proof. Inflation is closer to the Fed's goal of 2 percent. However, he could indicate plans for a rate cut at the Fed's next meeting that will be in September. Thousands in Colorado are being asked to evacuate as the Alexander Mountain Fire grows. The blaze is burning near Loveland, which is close to Fort Collin. It has scorched over 5,000 acres. It's 0% contained as of this morning. Deputies were going door to door yesterday telling people that they need to leave. Authorities are still investigating what started the wildfire. Well, Americans are showing their dominance early on in France. They've added to their medal total over the first couple of days. Their chance to increase it today as well as Jay Gray is in Paris for us right now in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower. Plenty more events, plenty more to be excited about today. Jay, good morning to you. Yeah, no question, Jeff. Good morning to you. And not a bad location either. You're absolutely right. Look, Team USA making history and also a habit of big wins here in Paris early on. The latest coming from American and Olympic royalty. And now we'll just watch. The Queen has returned to her throne. And as soon as I landed vault, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely, we're going to do this. Simone Biles leading Team USA to gold in the women's team competition and sealing her legacy in the sport, becoming the most decorated American gymnast in the history of the Olympic Games. She's the greatest of all great, so I think it was kind of like, okay, we're about to really do this and just go out there and, and be us. Ever. The Americans continue to make a splash in the pool, capturing silver and bronze in the women's 100-meter back, silver in the men's 800-meter free. U.S. gets the silver. And another silver in the men's 4 by 200 freestyle relay. Cedric up over the 50, the 40. She's going to take it all the way. Cedric for the U.S.A. A rush to glory for the women's sevens, taking bronze to become the first U.S. rugby team to medal since it became an Olympic sport in 2016. Can't even put it to words, honestly. That took absolutely everything, and I hope you can tell it means absolutely everything to us. Everything 
is on the line for swimming megastar Katie Ledecky later today. Heavily favored in the 1500 free, a gold would be her eighth, tying the record for the most golds of any U.S. woman in Olympic history. Yeah, and look, in our constant effort to bring you behind the curtain here and show you some of the gear, some of the tech that the athletes are using in these games, we go to swimming today. It's all about reducing drag in the pool, and that's why everything is so tight like this cap, and I promise you uh, these goggles are tight as well. Uh, but look, Jeff, here's, here's the uh, actual competition uh, tech suit uh, that the swimmers are wearing. You can see it here. It's, uh, it takes them... 40 minutes to put this on the first time before a, a meet, before they are swimming. 40 minutes to get it on. It's two sizes smaller than their practice suit. And they wear it one time, and it goes away. They throw it out. What's the cost? About $600 or so. Wow. Throwaway cash there. I'm, I'm really disappointed you didn't squeeze into that thing, Jay, this morning for us. But, but since you've been fencing uh, with the full gear and now the, uh, the swim not. cap and all. No one. <laughs> No I can't wait for tomorrow, I buddy. I did not squeeze into this. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait for tomorrow. Thank you for that, and great events coming today. Have a good one. <laughs> it has been such fun this week seeing Jay Gray's show and tell. Yeah, the fencing has been, Elizabeth, that was um, on Monday, and then yesterday he just held up the gymnast sparkly leotard. He didn't try to squeeze <laughs> into that either. But the goggles and the swim cap, that's a great look. He went for it. I love it. I love it. He's getting into it. So, you know, so, so much fun, so much excitement, and, uh, you know, still so many more days to go. So, so much fun, uh, so many fun events to watch. I can't wait for the kayaking. There's a, a new kayak cross that, uh, and I forget when it is. I don't think it's happened yet, but um, we have a North Carolinian who uh, is uh, in, in that, Evie Lempfarth from uh, the western part of the state. So exciting stuff. All right, we take a live look at Goldsboro. Still a little dark there this morning. Apex starting to brighten up a little bit as well as Chapel Hill and a live look at Fayetteville this morning as well. We take a look at our satellite and radar. Uh, we do have a lingering boundary with the potential for some isolated showers and thunderstorms to pop up along that boundary, especially in our southern counties. We did see some activity along that overnight, and that's all dropped down into South Carolina at this point. We take a look at future cast for today, starting off right here at lunchtime. Right after lunchtime, we begin to see the showers and thunderstorms popping up back to our south and west and diving to the south and east. So uh, Southern Pines, Fayetteville, Clinton are more likely to see showers and thunderstorms than really any other part of the viewing area for today. We take a look at our level one risk today. It is to the west, so it's going to be the triad back to Charlotte and toward the mountains. But then we are under a level one risk for tomorrow. You can see that covers the entire state, damaging winds, heavy rain, possibly some hail with that. And then the same thing again on Friday, uh, identical coverage of the entire state for that level one risk for severe storms. Of course, we're watching the tropics. So as we take a look at the tropical update here, uh, we have the potential for a system to develop in the Bahamas. We've been watching this for the last several days. It doesn't have a center of circulation yet. Once it starts to get that, it'll be easier to track on the models. But we're taking a look at what the probabilities are for a tropical storm here. With the models will show us that. And you can see here this uh, yellowish shaded area is going to give us about a 60% chance off the coast of the United States, off the East Coast. Now, it's possible that if it's a weaker storm, that it would drift here into the Gulf of Mexico. But if it's a little stronger, it'll probably get picked up by this high pressure system and move off the East Coast, off the coast of North Carolina. So what does that mean for us? We would likely see dangerous surf, rip current, some erosion, that sort of thing. Worst case scenario, if it were to drift a little closer to the coast, we could see some coastal flooding and possibly some minor wind damage. So if you're planning to go to the beach this weekend, what should you do? Just keep your eye on it. It's still a little early to know how close that system might get to the coast. And uh, we'll continue to update you with all the information that we get in regularly. The next big thing for us is going to be the upper 90s for our forecast for the highs for Thursday and Friday, and it's going to feel hot. It may be that that's going to be our next best chance for a heat advisory as it'll feel more like 106 to 110 mm. can by the time we get to Thursday and Friday. So. Say it isn't so. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, let's uh, check your morning commute this morning. For those of you getting ready to hand out some really good news to report, no major incidents on any of our major road races this morning. Uh, the Beltline free and clear. I-540 that many of you use as an alternate route. Also in Durham, I-885 in both directions 
really nice uh, this morning. Uh, let's bring it back to the capital city and show you this live look at I-440 and Lake Boone Trail. Traffic is beginning to pick up a little bit. The westbound lanes are heading toward us this morning. If you are listening to us on the radio, we always appreciate that. Get you where you're going. You can do the same at 99.3 FM in Raleigh and 96.5 FM in Durham. A community shows support for a teen after he was badly hurt in an accident. The event that is raising funds and raising spirits after a fall left him with a traumatic brain injury. And the husband of Simone Biles shares in her gold medal celebration in Paris. His transatlantic trip to share in her glory coming up in What's Trending. This What's Trending report sponsored by Rug and Home. Simone Biles' husband is sharing in her success at the Paris Olympics. And Ken Smith here now with What's Trending, Ken. Jonathan Owens arrived in Paris just in time to see Biles help lead the U.S. team to gold. The Chicago Bears gave him an excused absence from training camp so he would be there to cheer on his history-making wife. <laughs> How adorable are they? You know, and I, he's totally happy to be known as the husband of Simone Biles. Yes, he <laughs> plays in the NFL. And... You know, if the Chicago Bears do not excuse him, well, then quit because, of course, you oh, have to yeah. go and see yeah. your wife in the Olympics. And it's some Miles. It'd be super bad PR for the Bears <laughs> not to excuse him. But he had some travel troubles getting over there. He finally made yeah. it in time to see it. And then it, I just thought it was so cute afterwards seeing him. Uh, she took off the gold medal. She gave it to her mom to hold. And then he was holding it for a second. It was like he had never seen one before, <laughs> you know, holding it, biting into it. It's, it's cool. She did it. <laughs> yeah. Ken, thanks for Excellent. that. Excellent. NC State's Catherine Burkhoff, meantime, bringing a medal home from the Olympics. She won bronze in the 100-meter backstroke yesterday. Now, she and her father have now both won medals in that same swimming event. Burkhoff won the 100-meter backstroke in 1988 and again in 92. <laughs> UNC Chapel Hill, one step closer to finding its next chap uh, chancellor just ahead. Details on the special meeting happening today, walking you through the process of this search. And the heat index this afternoon, 103 in Raleigh, 107 in Favo, 105 in Clinton. I'll show you when we can be back under a heat advisory. And we will so soon learn who Kamala Harris's running mate will be. The plans the campaign has to bring them both to Raleigh for an event next week.